Let's go. Welcome back. Baller Central YouTube channel. It's your boy, Phil. Uh, I'm recording this the day of the NBA trade deadline. It is well gone and passed. It's about 10 o'clock right now, 10.21 to be exact. And I'm just making this video just to, you know, give my reactions to a couple of them. Well, maybe like the major ones because, you know, we don't need to know where Mike Muscala went, even though he went to Boston. But, you know, this is just a video to, to, to go over some of the major deals that went on through the trade deadline. So I got it on the screen here. I'm about to pop it up. And, hey, let's get started. Uh, just, just a reminder, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, put on notifications so you know when we upload, and like and comment down below um, who won certain trades, who lost certain trades, etc. Who who won the trade deadline, who lost the trade deadline, and who's going to be potential buyout candidates because there's some players like, out there, Russell Westbrook, uh, Pat Bev, that we're looking to get a new home after today. So let's get right into it. So let's go with da -da -da -da. I'm going to go with this right here. That works. Okay. Okay. So the first one, I think this was one of the major ones I have to go over. Uh, Lakers uh, finally let go of Russ Westbrook, even though I think, you know, he was their one of their best players, probably like what? I mean, hopefully. I mean, how can I word that right? Uh, I felt like he was getting a lot of hate, even though he was being a complete professional on the Lakers. Uh, he was a starter, but then they moved him to the bench where he was very successful. He was a, a six a six man of the year candidate. But like I said, the Lakers were very toxic. Well, there was a report that came out their coaching staff was toxic. So obviously it didn't work out. So he, he got moved. Uh, the official trade was uh, D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, and Jared Vanderbilt heading to the Lakers. The Jazz gets Russell Westbrook, Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Jones, and a Lakers 2027 first round pick is pick is predicted one through four. So that means obviously if it falls between five and after, it's the Lakers. No, if, if, if it goes after one through four, it's the Lakers, but if it falls from five to et cetera, it's the Jazz. So the Timberwolves receive uh, Mike Conley, Nikhil, Alexander Walker, second round picks in 2024, 25, and 26. So, I mean, you don't get the exact upgrade you want with point guard with D'Lo from Russell Westbrook, but what you do get, you get shooting and Malik Beasley, and you get much needed defense and uh, big man help with Jared Vanderbilt. So, I mean, it's not the best move Lakers could have made, but you get some much needed depth. And you, more, more, more you got was more needed, sh much needed shooting and uh, defense because. The depth around the Lakers is very poor, even with Rushbrook there. So I guess you got something. You got you got the approved a little bit. So hey, it is what it is at their end. Uh, for the Jazz, I mean they're expecting to buy him out, buy Westbrook out. So I mean, I guess it's a decent move. Juan Toscano Anderson, Damian Jones are not gonna do nothing for you. They're pretty much like stockpiling assets at this point, draft picks, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. They must have like 10 plus draft picks in the first round in the next couple of years. So it was a necessary move. Plus, you have a lot of cap space, so. Westbrook's just going to find a new team. As for the Timberwolves, oh, not, I think the Timberwolves are definitely the biggest losers in this trade. You get Mike Conley, but like I said, uh, I think this is a downgrade of point guards, just like the Lakers did. Uh, from Going from D'Lo to Mike Conley, obviously Mike Conley is at the end of his career. Uh, he doesn't provide as much as D'Lo would, but I guess some way, somehow, I guess you had to dump D'Lo just because the Lakers wanted him, but... Uh, and they're still, and Cat is still out, so there's not much you're getting from that guy. Nikhil Alexander Walker, uh, he was decent in uh, New Orleans, but we're not getting much from him today. So hopefully he can bounce back and be a nice role player for them. Okay, what else we got? Okay, this is uh, right here, Nick's trade. Uh, Cam Reddish, the player that Nick's barely even used after getting from Atlanta. Uh, he bright future. I mean. Put bright future from the draft. He was of a very good pick, one that uh, we saw play with RJ Barrett and Zion, but uh, got the short end of the stick. Not much playing time with the Knicks and Tom Thibodeau, but he has said that Portland with the new opportunity. They also get Civi and a protected first round pick, the Trailblazers receive. And the Knicks get Josh Hart, which is a former teammate of Jalen Brunson. Uh, they went to Villanova together. They won rings together. So obviously there's some chemistry there. So and Josh Hart makes the Knicks better, obviously, 
because of his shooting, defense, rebounding, et cetera, et cetera. So, and plus, it's always good to make uh, one of your players happy, like a Jalen Brunson, who has been absolutely great for you this year after receiving that contract that a lot of people criticize, including myself. So, hey, if you make one of your star players happy, that's always a plus if you're in New York. Plus, it's your count anyways now since the Nets obviously imploded. Next up, uh, the Spurs traded uh, center Jakob Poto to his original team, the Toronto Raptors. Uh, I was hoping the Celtics would get Jacopoto for some big man defense because they need uh, another big to help defend, rebound, and uh, rim protect. But sadly enough, they didn't get him. They got Mike Muscala and said uh, he can shoot the ball. I mean, 39% from three, I believe I saw. So, I mean, they did something, but they didn't do too much. So, I mean, a decent – it's not – plus they're like first in the East, I believe, still. So not much you can do from the Celtics at that point of view. The only thing you needed – at this point, basically now is get everyone healthy because Jalen Brown's injured, et cetera, et cetera. Marcus Smart's injured. Robert Williams going through injuries. So get this team healthy by the top playoffs. Everything should be okay. As for the Spurs, uh, see, they got Ken Birch, uh, center, projected a projected 2024 first round pick, two future second round picks, and that's it. So basically, they're trying to stockpile their assets for the Wimbanyama sweepstakes. And then Raptors just received Yoko Poto. So they basically get their player back. I mean, he's a good player. I think he's a good role player. Definitely starter worthy. Uh, based, uh, very one of the underrated standards in the league. Good at uh, defending, rebounding, rim protecting, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, hey, hopefully the Raptors get, put good, him to good use just because we were, there were rumors of OG but Anunobi getting traded. So, hey, maybe they're trying to make another playoff run because I think they needed, they missed Jacopo. So let's we'll see how, how that goes. <laughs> I did one of the biggest trades of the day. Kevin Durant traded to the Phoenix Suns. So in this trade, uh, this is supposed to happen in the summer because when Kevin Durant was threatening the Suns and Kyrie as well. But this time around, this actually happened. So the Nets receive Macau Bridges, Jay Crowder, Kevin Johnson, four first-round picks, 2023, 25, 27, and 29, and one pick swap in 2028. And the Suns receive... Uh, Kevin Durant, obviously. So, looking at looking at it from the Nets' uh, point of view, uh, I mean, you got depth there, pretty much. But obviously, this is they're and now they're officially in rebuild mode now. So you're not going to see them competing for a championship for a while. But I mean, it all depends if they make moves. Obviously, they have a lot of depth they could trade for. It. They have some picks they could trade for. It all depends who wants who wants to be that star that leads that Nets team. Just because it didn't work out with. Uh, Harden, Kyrie, or KD, and Kyrie was talking bad about the management. So who knows? Maybe Kyrie might be telling some truth, or maybe it's just Kyrie being Kyrie. So it's tough to say who would want to be in front of that uh, very toxic New York media. So good luck to whoever star wants to headline that team. Uh, I think basically this is a wash year for them. Just see what what players you have, what players you want to trade for assets, and just you know. You have nothing to play for. I mean, you probably will make the playoffs, but it will probably be a first or round exit at best just because you don't have the player you the team you once had a year ago. So basically, uh, see where the where the chips lie and uh, go into next year looking to see where you can move on from there. As for the Suns, hey, you needed to find something to help you be more competitive after last year's uh, disaster against the Mavericks. I get a blown out of home like that, 30, 40 pieces, wild. But you get a superstar who loves going to things that are already built in Kevin Durant. Uh, so now Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, if this team doesn't win a championship, that is absolutely wild. You have Chris Paul, uh, an elite passer, playmaker. Devin Booker, one of the best young scorers in the league. I think he's like 26, 27, so not too young. Kevin Durant, obviously one of the best players in the league. And De- DeAndre Ayton, the top 10, top 6, 7 center in the league. You have all this talent, and you still have a shot to win the West. So not win the West. Well, they, they do have time to win the West, but they need to come up the West. You do not, you do not trade for Kevin Durant and not win and not have a, at least a change in the championship. They got to return back to the finals, or at least make Western Conference Finals first with Kevin Durant. If you don't do that, it's a, another a failure of a super team that Kevin Durant was a part of, minus the Golden State Warriors, of course. So. Hey, all the pressure is on Kevin Durant and the Phoenix Suns now because all the all eyes will be on them, especially when the playoffs come. Because we everyone wants to see another Mavericks and Suns rivalry before, 
But now with Kevin Durant and Kyrie in the mix, they want to see that matchup even more now. So it's going to be very interesting to see when, if they do match up. Because I'm looking forward to that battle as well. Next up we have... Okay, so Jay Crowder got traded to the Nets, obviously. Okay, so yeah, Jay Crowder is got moved once again in the trade deadline. Uh, he was once going from Philly, uh, not from Philly, from Philly, like Phoenix to Brooklyn, but then uh, they changed their mind. Apparently, a, a very good theme of uh, this trade deadline was swapping five second round picks. So I'm guessing they're saying, fuck it, we don't care. They're not going to be appointed players, anyways. A lot of teams said that this uh, today with their second round picks. They just said, fuck them, we don't need them. Um, so basically, a three team trade involving the Bucks, Nets, and Pacers. Uh, the Bucks received the Jay Crowder, so they get a very good three and D player, much needed because they're going to they're gonna need everyone they can to for defense with a tough East, including the Celtics and Sixers, and Heat, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the Nets received five second round picks, so hey, more depth for picks for the Nets in case they want to use it. Uh, the Pacers, uh, they got Sergi Baca, who was looking to move on from that team. Uh, Jordan Nawara, George Hill, who actually played for the Pacers a while back, and a second round pick. So the Bucks receive much needed defense, which they need to help Giannis out because they need anyone they can for defense to make a, a huge important run in the playoffs. The Nets draft capital. I mean, there's not much you could do now since you're not entitled to contention anymore. Uh, the Pacers, I mean, Ibaka, Noir, and George Hill basically just more depth. Uh, I don't know how much Ibaka is going to do at this point in his career, but uh, plus I think the Pacers are in rebuilding mode anyway, so. I guess we got to. I mean, he'll probably be a mentor to some players. I guess he's at that point in his career. Jordan Nuara, uh, rural player, George Hill, probably a mentor as well to Halliburton, probably. And second round pick, obviously, is of draft capital. And this is one of the trades that confused me. Uh, the Lakers, after trading for much needed depth for a big man, they traded away their best, one of their best big men. Because Anthony Davis, Powell Ford, Thomas Bryant should be the center. Um, they the Lakers sent Thomas Bryant to the Nuggets. The Nuggets received Thomas Bryant, a very good move for them. They received much needed uh, big man depth behind Jokic. Because Tom, Thomas Bryant was having a, a decent season, uh, rebounding and scoring when AD was out. So now they have some uh, help for Jokic. Uh, the Lakers receive Devon Reed and second round picks and. 25, 26, and 29. So very confusing move by the Lakers. I thought, I mean, basically this move was said to help bring Jared Vanderbilt's minutes up to give him more minutes to, to play for the Lakers. So, I mean, I mean that's nice and all because I do like Jared Vanderbilt as a player. He's a good defender and rim protector So and rebounder. So, I mean, I guess it's all right. But I still would have liked the depth of having Thomas Bryant, AD, and Vanderbilt because I think Vanderbilt is going to play more power forward. And AD should be playing more of center, and Thomas Bryant could be that first big off the bench for them. But now that's not possible. So, but they did make a move later on. Uh, okay, this is another trade as well. Uh, the Trailblazers grab Matisse Thybulle. We didn't see much of him after last year for the Sixers because he's not much of an offensive threat, more of defensive. So I guess the Sixers didn't need him as much. The Hornets received uh Civi. Which we just traded from the Knicks, and a second round pick in 2024, 2029, and the Sixers. They got the best player in the draft, not in the draft, but in the trade. Jalen McDaniels from the Hornets. Uh, he was having a good season so far, and I think this added this adds much needed depth for the forward in Philly, just because of how well he's been playing. A uh, decent shooter, decent all around player, very good for as a backup for Tobias or whoever they have at small forward. So much needed depth for them. Uh, let's see, and there was rumors about Zach Levine going to the Knicks, but obviously none of that ever happened. So I guess Zach Levine is stuck there. And one of the moves that happened, another move that happened in the West involved the point guard. Uh, the Nuggets received a second round picks in 2024 and 2025, and the Clippers received bonus Highland. Obviously, uh, there was some drama in uh, Denver involving the point guards, Jamal Murray and Bones Highland. So uh, they went to, you know, help out their star player and make them feel happy. So they shipped out Bones Highland, even though he was a very talented 
player that's having a good couple of first years in the league. Uh, they shipped them off to LA. I mean, Reggie Jackson and John Wall wasn't wasn't cutting it, so they decided to cut ties and start new. And I think Bones Highland. I don't know if he's going to be the third or not. Hopefully, he is. I think he adds a uh, much new depth and a different play style than what Reggie Jackson and uh, John Wall provided for the Clippers. So, very good move for the Clippers, in my opinion. What's it got? Okay, so the Warriors. Uh, they made some moves as well in this uh, trade deadline. Uh, they basically what this, t- this title says. They threw in the towel on Wiseman. Uh, they didn't believe in him anymore. The project wasn't working. Uh, they should have drafted Car- Lamelo or someone else. Uh, it just didn't work out. Uh, Wiseman was spent a lot of time injured or in the G League, so they he he didn't get much. But the opportunities where he had, where he was in the NBA, uh, they weren't impressed. They weren't playing to their their ability. And as a championship contending team, you need uh, all the big man de- depth you need. And just Wiseman wasn't cutting it, so they decided to cut ties. Uh, Hawks received Sadiq Bay. Uh, he's been having a good uh, season or two the last couple of years. Very good scorer. The Hawks add some much-needed scoring depth in the wings uh, with Bogdan, with DeAndre Hunter, and him. So uh, he's going to be a nice role player coming off the bench for them. And the common theme for uh, this year's trade deadline, five second-round picks. So the Warriors add some draft capital. And we'll see later on down the road what they use for him in this video. So five second-round picks. It seems everyone just said, fuck it. I'm just uh, we don't want we don't need second round picks. We're just sending all of them. Okay, so the Clippers made another trade. Uh, let's see, the Clippers received Eric Gordon. Uh, he's been on the Rockets for a while. He's he's a reliable vet that can score the ball uh, at, at will. Maybe not as good as he used to when he was on the Clippers, but it's a nice a homecoming for Eric Gordon. He he can still give you like what 10, 12 points a game. Um, and I think it has a much needed scoring depth because uh, I'm. The Clippers have been, you know, on and off this year with with injuries. Obviously, Kawhi, Paul George, John Wall, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, I don't think he'll be a starter, but I think he he's gonna uh, be a very good player coming off the bench. When obviously Kawhi and Paul George isn't there, so they're gonna need if they need score, they're gonna have to get it from him. Uh, Luke Kennard, uh, he's been going through injuries as well, and he was he's he was the one of the best like best three point shooters in the league as of today, but. The Clippers decided to cut ties to get depth for more than just three-point shooting, so they sent them to Memphis. Memphis does need shooting because they've been very sluggish ever since, you know, Josh said uh, he's fine in the West, so they needed to make some moves just because everyone else around them in the West made moves. And the Rockets, uh, Danny Green, a 2023 first-round pick swap, and the return of John Wall after, you know, a very, very – uh, televised or watched interview that was all flowing all over social media by him talking about the Rockets, saying all they wanted to do was lose, they tanked, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and not saying the best things about Kevin Porter Jr., Jalen Green, but he will not be a Rocket for long as he will be waived, uh, waived to waived after today. I don't know when exactly he'll be waived, but he will not be spending the rest of his career in Houston. Obviously, maybe because of that, but who knows? But he'll he'll have a chance to find somewhere else to play. Where will it be? I have no clue, but hey, we'll, make sure you stay tuned to social medias. Maybe they'll leak that out. Okay. Uh, the Lakers, they made another move. They were lacking for big men. So what they what did they do? Uh, Patrick Beverly online was happy they got D'Angelo Russell back because D'Angelo Russell and Pat Bev played together in Minnesota. But it, that, did not, that reunion did not last for long as they sent him and a second round pick to Orlando for Mo Bamba. Uh, I mean, you needed some big man depth to help out Tom Bryant and AD. And I think Mo Bamba, he's not the best option, but I think he's decent. I mean, he hasn't been very notable the last year or two, just because I think he's been lacking the aggressiveness you need on defense. I mean, he's seven foot. What he's one of the big. He's one of the seven footers in the league, and he's been decent here and there. He he showed some bright spots last year with scoring and defense, but we haven't seen the same. From, from that this year. So, you know, him getting a chance to play with LeBron and AUD, maybe that will give him the awareness and uh, playing ability to, to, you know, to compete for a championship if the Lakers compete for a championship. I don't think so personally, but hopefully he improves his play just because the second they realize that he's not it, gone. Because Le GM. But that's just a joke. LeBron isn't really like that, I, I think. 
So, and uh, the last trade I'm gonna go over, uh, Gary Payton. He was he signed with the Blazers in the offseason earlier this year, after winning the championship with the Warriors. Uh, he wanted a certain amount of money to come back. The Warriors didn't give it to him and let him walk to the Blazers. And fast forward to today, and I did mention it a couple minutes ago. The Warriors will find a way to use these five second round draft picks later on in the video, and so they did. Uh, the Warriors get back Gary Payton, but in return, they send five second round picks. Another trade involving multiple second round picks in this trade. Uh, basically, the Warriors needed uh, some defense and they needed uh, someone reliable because some of the younger guys have not been playing up the par. So they got someone they're familiar with, and Gary Payne the second. He's not going to give you, you know, buckets on a given night, but he will be the hustle player for you, the one that can play his defense, and that can guard a lot of matchups one through three. So, and plus, there he's very he's very liked in the uh, or, a Warriors organization. So it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to get a notable face. And with Steph Curry being out for a while, he'll probably be out for maybe a little bit after All Star Weekend. It gives you some reliable guard play because, like I said, he doesn't score, but. He can definitely move the ball around and play defense for you. So, I mean, hey, I think that's everything. So, um, those are all the trades. Uh, I think the biggest winners here are mostly everyone in the West. The Grizzlies are probably the losers here as well. Uh, they didn't do much besides get Luke Kennard after everyone everyone in the West loaded up. The Clippers, uh, the Suns, the Lakers. Uh, they upgraded, and the Grizzlies just kind of made like one tiny move to get Luke Kennard, so they didn't do much. Uh, who else lost? Uh, the Bulls. I think the Bulls are losers as well. Uh, all this, all these reports about Zach Levine not being happy, talks about trades with them with the Knicks trading for Zach Levine. I mean, this was their chance to, to, you know, to say, hey, we're done with this experiment. Let's have to rebuild. But instead, you still have Vooch, you still have DeRozan, you still have Levine. So, and they haven't been, this team hasn't been, like the team as advertised and Lonzo's still out. So I think that this experiment with those three and Lonzo's over, I think you need to throw in the towel and just start over because they were supposed to be competing by now and it hasn't been showing so much promise. Uh, who else is a loser? I think the Nuggets are still winners just because of Jokic's talent. Basically, this is all just to go after Jokic. The, the, the only move the Nuggets made was getting rid of Bones Highland. I mean, obviously you have Jamal Murray, but hopefully their depth is still as good just because, you know, they're one of the best teams in the West. Jokic is the leading candidate for MVP with averaging close to triple-double or at a triple-double at this moment. Uh, let's see, the winners, the Suns. I mean, yeah, the Suns. Yeah, because they got, they got KD, CP3, Booker, and Dayton. It's... Win, it's win or or failure at this point. There's no way you don't you trade for KD and not win a championship, or at least contend for a championship. So a lot of pressure on the West. Uh, some more winners. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to say slightly the Lakers. Yes, the whole experiment of the Russell Westbrook didn't go well, but you got big man depth in Mo Bamba and Jared Vanderbilt. You got some shooting with um, Malik Beasley, even though it's going to be awkward for Scottie Pippen Jr. because Jakes, but we've got LeBron and AD some help. All they have to do is stay healthy, and I think this team should make the play in at least, or at least the playoffs. So we got to check back in that. Uh, what are some other winners to lose? Oh, the Clippers. Uh, they got they shipped some people out. Uh, Luke Kennard, uh, Reggie Jackson. Oh yeah, Reggie Jackson got traded to Charlotte as well. Uh, you got traded for Mason Plumley. I think Mason Plumley is a very underrated center. So you got some a very good big man depth with Zubac and Mason Plumley. He can, he has he's very underrated. He can play make. Uh, he can rebound. He's basically a triple. Th he, he's basically a low key triple double threat every single night. So you're getting a lot of depth with that. So yeah, they they basically um, did a lot of maneuvering because they know this Paul George and Kawhi window is not you know doesn't last forever, and they need to make moves to compete now. So basically, they shipped out Kennard, John Wall, Reggie Jackson, and they brought back in Eric Gordon, who they're familiar with. He's been a longtime Clipper. Uh, Mason Plumley, very good center, underrated for some depth, and they brought in Bones Highland to help, you know help be that starter point guard that 
that they desperately need because guard plays very important to West with people like Steph Curry, John Morant, Damon Lillard, Jamal Murray, et cetera, et cetera. So shout out to the Clippers. I really like what they did. Uh, let's see some other ones. Uh, the Warriors, the Decent. Uh, Trailblazers. Oh, six. I like the Sixers. Uh, no, I guess, no, I guess, no, no, no. Also, the mm, okay, I think that's it pretty much. Oh, the Heat are losers as well. Uh, there were a report that wanted to move on for Kyle Lowry, they didn't do that, and they've been underperforming like crazy this year. So, obviously, with the moves that need to be made, they didn't get anything done. I think they got they got rid of Dwayne Deadman, but that's it. But yeah, I mean, the the Heat obviously need to make some moves to help compete, but they didn't do anything, so they're stuck in limbo. So we got to see if they'll turn this ship around or or not. Because Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, they should be one of the top teams in the East, like everyone predicted in the year beginning of the year, but that's not happening right now. So it's a lot of um, a lot of wait and see in Miami. So give me one moment. So. Uh, let me know down below who you got, got who you guys got for winners and losers. Uh, let me know which other videos. It's not usually me by myself going on a long ass rant because I'm not the best speaker, but uh, I wanted to try to make some different content for the YouTube channel and as well as different socials. So let me know how I did. Any pointers? Because you know, as as Ball Central, you know, gets older and older, year by year, day by day, month by month, you know, we get better. So. Obviously, when the content is a thousand times better than this, I'm gonna we're gonna all look back, especially I'm part of the team, look back and laugh at how bad content like this was. So, uh, this has been uh, the trade deadline reaction. Hey, next up, put play All Star Weekend and then playoff push. I'm not, I'm excited to see how the rest of this year ends, especially with Super Bowl coming up. So it's gonna be strictly basketball for a, a couple of months, and that's one of my fortes, no mat. So I'm excited to see where it lands. So with that being said, uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you've watched it all the way through, type in uh, I got hoes calling Mo Bamba reference. So if you watched throughout that whole video, put that down in the comment section. And with that being said, uh, thank you for watching. Make sure you like and comment down below. Subscribe and put notifications on so you know when we upload. And with that being said, uh, we'll see you in the next video. This is Phil, and we'll see you next time. Deuces.